Hi, welcome to Wet Nets. I'm Matt Hayes. This is Mick Brown, and you find us here today on another one of our fishing adventures, and this is Rutland Water. Now, Rutland is not only the smallest county in England, but strangely enough, it's actually got the biggest inland man-made water. It's a huge reservoir here, set up primarily for trout fishing 25 years ago, but today, Mick, we're gonna try and track down the legendary pike that swim in this reservoir. To the uh, first drift now. We're going to drift and fish the reservoir to try and cover the ground. We're over about 30 foot of the water at the moment, which is a good depth for pike. Well, if you look at the surface temperature, Matt, it's 14 degrees at the moment, so the pike are probably going to want to be in deeper water to get some colder water down there. Now, we've been told to come here to the North Arm by John Marshall in the fisheries office. He's obviously aware of any pike captures made by trout anglers accidentally and he thinks this is a good place to start. We're really looking to fish in 20 to 30 feet, but we're gonna start shallower. And what we're gonna try and do is use the echo sounder, which is a vital piece of equipment on a place like this. Now we're starting to see the first signs of weed here on the chart. These little raggedy bits sticking up have just appeared in about 15 feet of water mix. So it's the first time we've actually seen yeah. those. I would guess that's the weed. The important thing about this feature is that slope the pike will get down behind that slope and as the trout and the coarse fish are moving across it it's a perfect ambush place for them to come shooting up and grab them. Yeah, we're on about 16 feet here so this is a good place to begin the drift and you might be thinking that Mick is going to be doing a bit of parasending but in fact what Mick's holding is a device called a drogue and it's basically an underwater parachute which we attach to the side of the boat to slow the drift down because we want to drift as slowly as possible. One thing that you do have to watch when you're drogue fishing is when you hook a big fish, it doesn't run through the drogue and get tangled. If you've got a really big fish on, probably the best thing to do is to pull your drogue in. And what we can also do is mark our position on the GPS. Well, you might have thought that Mick Brown was the ugliest thing in this boat, but let me tell you, this is, because this lure, this soft rubber lure, is called an Ugly Joe, and it'll fish right down on the bottom, hopefully where the fish are. Mick, I kid you not, I'm in on my first cast. <laughs> I can't believe it. I've just had a hell of a bite on this Ugly Joe. <laughs> Oh, look, there he is. Ob obviously doing something right, Matt. Oh, look at this fish go, Mick. Blimey. Obviously doing something right. That's amazing. First cast, Mick. Well, I... <laughs> People here... are going to think we set this up, but I promise you we didn't. I'm here to witness it, Matt, it is. On the ugly Joe. Now I'm going to bring it round to this side of the boat. Well, while you uh, bring it round, Matt, I'll mark the position. Yeah, you mark the position on the GPS. Well, that is absolutely fantastic. Right, I've marked it on, mate. <laughs> I've always said you're the luckiest angler in the world. Well, I'm beginning to believe you myself, actually. <laughs> there you go. Not a big fish, but it's a Rutland pike. Yeah. Oh. Probably never been caught before, mate, that one. Oh, it's pristine, Mick. It's absolutely mint. Beautiful fish. Oh, I'm so pleased. You know, these pike lead such mysterious lives. They're here in this huge sheet of water and they're down there in the depths. They're feeding on coarse fish and trout and they can grow to quite enormous sizes. And in fact, they've got a very accelerated life cycle. I think they might be right up in that shallow water. Hmm, I don't know. Oh, I had a bite then. Ooh. Mick, I think I'm into a trout. Oh, <laughs> oh dear. Oof. I don't think my heart can take this. <laughs> I've been going through all my old favourites today and none of them seem to be working. You tried Elvis? Elvis? 
22 feet, top of the north arm. Everything is quiet. Except you. <laughs> but the anticipation of this building. <laughs> Well, Mick, we've made a few casts since that first fish, my son. Yeah, we've paid the price for that early success, haven't we? Yeah, I've got a right old pile of lures next to me, and none of them have caught me anything. Same here, I've been through my box twice. But, you know, I think this whole thing is a mindset, you know, because when you think about your lure being a tiny little pinprick in this massive sheet of water, it can be a bit soul destroying, really. Yeah. Well, this is Rutland, Matt. Hey? Rutland. I'm trying to catch you out. This is Grafham. <laughs> so, this is Grafham. Well, after our day at Rutland yesterday, it's with mixed feelings we find ourselves here on a sister water to Rutland, Grafham Water. And the reason that we've come here is that that pike I caught first cast was literally the only one that we caught all day. And we were persuaded by the lads down at Rutland that we really should be here at Grafham because apparently the trout anglers here have been hooking pike on the fly and they really feel that we've got a better chance. Now this is a very interesting area. We've just been motoring around it slowly and we've picked up what we think is a very interesting feature on the um, echo sounder. Now we figure that that is some sort of roadway or trench that runs out from the valve tower there to another one way over on the horizon. And we reckon that this particular feature could throw up a fish or two. Yeah. Well, I think I'm going to start with a lure that's been very successful for me, and that's the Helltail. This lure, actually, you can fish it at all depths, but I like to fish it on the bottom to start with. We've got about 32 foot of water underneath us. I'm just going to cast it out, let it sink to the bottom, leave it there for a few seconds, and just work it back in a series of short retrieves, letting it rise a couple of feet off the bottom or so, and then back down on the bottom, let it rest a bit. And I'm really targeting the pike that are lying down there and they're perhaps a bit stubborn and they're not, they're not going to come up for baits. Well, if your lure's ugly, Mick, mine is positively outrageous. This one is actually called a bulldog. It's a soft rubber lure and um, I'm not sure what it's meant to be, actually. It's, it's a very unusual lure, but very, very effective on this type of water. Like Mick's Helltail, basically the idea is to cast this out, let it sink to the bottom, and then bring it back nice and slow to keep the lure working down where the pike are lying. I've modified this one slightly, actually, for all you lure fishing buffs out there. I've put a little spinner blade on the bottom split ring just for a little bit of extra attraction. So when you wind this lure back, the old tail's wobbling like crazy. The spinner blade is spinning round and uh, when a pike takes hold of this it bites into soft rubber so it tends to hang on it's a very very effective lure have to go over your side man well the weather's taking a turn for the worse but we're still at it and one thing's for sure about these trout reservoir pike, they're not easy to catch. And we're just basically working our way through as many lures that we can think of. And it's starting to get to the stage where I'm, I'm getting more and more outrageous. And in a moment, I'm going to try casting this thing out, <laughs> which is a huge meaty lure. It's um, called a, a man's 30 and basically it will go straight down into 30 feet if it's cranked hard enough. And uh, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to try and get this thing to scrape down on the bottom here, which is in the mid-20 feet, and see if I can get a bait right down where the pike are lying, because both Mick and myself know from experience that these fish are often right hard on the bottom. Oh, Mick, I think I just missed one there. Did you? Yeah, right, there it is. 
What on that monstrosity? Yeah. I believe it. Oh, that's a kipper, that is, mate. <laughs> oh, no. I don't believe it. Oh, no, Mick. Oh, it's still there. I thought the fish had come off. It's running right at me. I thought you got the bottom, Matt. It's certainly a pike. It's, uh, it's not a small I think fish. There's no doubt about that. I've got a great big lure on. I, I could hardly cast it. Just shows, doesn't it? You've got to go through all of them to try them. Yeah, but it's a nice fish. Not a happy one either. He's going to go under the boat. Oh, that's a really fat fish, Mick. That one. God, look at him go. There's some power there, isn't there? It's very lightly hooked, mate. I tell you, it's actually the hooks have slipped and gone in his jaw. You know, I said to you, I thought it may have come off. Yeah. Well, it almost did. You've got it. I've got lovely. it, mate. That's <laughs> a lovely that. fish. That's a cracker, Matt. It's a beauty. I don't think that's what? far off 20. No, no, it's very close. And that's what we came to Grafham Water for, I'll tell you. That's a proper trout water fish. Absolute clonker. Beautiful pike. Serious dentures there, matey. Yeah. Head like a wolf. Well, Mick, the... The sling weighs one pound ten ounces, and it's roughly twenty and a quarter pounds uh, yeah. with the sling. So you've got to take the sling yeah. off. So it's about eighteen and three quarters, which yeah. is a nice pike, yeah. actually. Beautiful fish. We'll just have a last long admiring glance. You can see where these trout water fish get their size from. They're very, very heavy for the short length. A fish like this in a river would probably only weigh about eleven, ten or eleven pounds. But here. They're deep, they're very wide across the back, and they really are superb pike. And this fish is pretty well ready to go. She's gonna swim down. There she goes. Yes, sir. Well, here we are, another day, another dollar, and it really is superb conditions for fishing the reservoir. But at the moment, I'm just setting us up on a drift. We, we found that the pike seem to be lying on the ledge itself, and that there comes a point when our, our lures are getting low enough in the water to actually entice them. We're not getting them fully down onto the bottom because the water's a little bit too deep for that until we get quite close to the bank but by using the drift and cranking the baits down quite hard we are getting them fairly deep we've just dropped into 18 foot now mick from 17 so we're getting a bit deeper and we're nearing the sort of contour we want right here we go okay Matt, Matt, yeah, a huge fish has just followed my lure in. Has it really? Yeah, that that was a huge fish. It, well, I'm, I'm probably getting carried away. It was certainly well over 20 pounds. Well, Mick's just seen a really big pike, and I know he knows what he's talking about. It's very, very exciting knowing that there's one of those big old girls in the area. You've really got me on the go now, Mick. <laughs> well, here it is. This is the lure that that big pike chased in. It's a crankbait. And normally it floats, but as you start to retrieve it, the water pressure on the lip makes it dive. And the depth it dives depends upon a lot of factors. I mean, this one, under the right conditions, will go down 18, even 20 feet, perhaps when you're trolling. But I'm trying my hardest to get it down to about 13 or 14 feet today. I know when we're over 15 foot, I'm just right. But five foot's not far for a pike to come up, is it? No, I think as long as we're within five or six feet of the bottom, we're in with a shout. It's interesting, Mick, with you talking about seeing a fish follow in, but people often think I'm a complete and utter nutcase, wandering around on dull days with sunglasses on, looking like Roy Orbison, but <laughs> the reason I do it is because they enable me to see below the surface, glare on the water, even on dull days, and it's because of what you've said, that you often see fish following yeah. in. 
So that's your excuse for looking like an idiot? It is my excuse for looking like a complete and utter plonker, yeah. There's a bite, Mick! What was that I wasn't looking? What was you casting? Buka Depth Raider. Ah. Isn't it exciting hooking them? Yeah. I mean, you never know what's going to come up out of these reservoirs, do you? No. The fish took quite a lot of line initially. Now, it's just idling around. There it is on the surface, Mick. Oh, look at that in the sunlight. Isn't that fantastic? Oh, that's yes. what you like to say. Look at that. Cool. Big old mouth opened up there. That was lovely. That's a nice looking fish, Matt. Yeah, it's a lovely looking fish, Mick. Isn't it turning some water? <laughs> that is one angry pike, mate, I'll tell you. I should take it steady, he's only on one hook now. He is, yeah. Just underneath the mandible. Oh, Mick, that's a beautiful fish. Look at the teeth on that. <laughs> Check out those dentures. My word. Right, let's bring it around and see if it will play ball with us, mate. If you just stay still for a minute. Oh, oh yes. <sighs> nice fish, Mick. Oh, it's a cracker. That's a beauty. Look at the belly on his. Oh, yes. That was a very, very delicate hook hold, Mick, wasn't it? Oh, yes. Sir. Beautiful. Lucky, lucky not to lose that, mate. I'll tell you what, that's well over £20, mate. Well, that is a magnificent trout reservoir special, Mick. <sighs> It's not far off £20, that, you know. That's, I'll tell you what, that's well over £20. That's pounds. a beauty. Oh, it's a cracker, isn't it? I've got the fish inside the sling now. And now, for the moment of truth, we've zeroed in these scales. Brownie's brought along his electronic scales for the occasion. And, uh, oh, I need to switch them on. There we go. Right. Mick, you'll have to read off the weight because I can't see it from here. It's brownie. Yeah. You've got to get some new glasses. It, no, I don't need big glasses. I'm waiting for it to settle. It's. I'll give you about an ounce over twenty-three pounds. Yes, sir, e Bob. Well, that's what we came here for, boy. Yeah, you'd be pleased with that. Well, we, that's what we've come here for. Yeah. Make a twenty-pound yeah. pike, and we've yeah. got one. Right, Mick. A quick couple of snaps, and we'll put her back. Just show us a bit more tail, aren't it? Hang on. Let's see the back a bit more. Okay, that should be enough, mate. Lovely. Now, just look at this fish. It's got classic trout reservoir pike proportions. It's a real fatty. And I'm just going to lower her over the side of the boat. Now, let her go. It is known that because they eat a proportion of coarse fish and trout, they grow very quickly. But the penalty for bulk and size is a reduced lifespan. So they are very curious fish. And when you see this magnificent creature with a head like a crocodile, and you just cradle this great primeval beast because these have been around since the dinosaurs, don't forget. It really is a wonderful, wonderful thing. Oh, well done, mate. Yes, sir. -y. Yes. <laughs> well done, mate. I tell you, these fish, they are very, very difficult to catch. Um, these trout reservoirs have got enormous potential. But the pike mick are very well fed, yeah, and yeah. every time you hook one or get a bite, believe me, your heart is just in your mouth. Oh, we know you, Matt. I know, we've just moved back round to one of our previously productive areas. And Mick's got one on. I'll crank my lure in, mate. I've, um I've been using a man's 25 plus for a long time and I've just changed my collar and it's the first cast with a different collar. Surprised now that happens, isn't it? Look at that. Nick, it's another donkey. I know. Get the <laughs> saddle ready, boy. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful, Mick. Actually, he's come up rather quick. I reckon he's going to fight like stink now. Really beautiful fish, though, mate. Look at that. Oh, look at that. What a beautiful fish. Oh, thanks very much, mate. That's brilliant. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> God. It's a real fatty. God, are we having a day or what? 
Thanks. Actually, that's the first pike I've caught on that lure. Fantastic. Well, listen, mate, the hooks are very close to my hands. So, what, um, let's let's get the sensible thing on. It would be much appreciated if you uh, remove them. Oh, well, you got a good grip, mate. I've oh, got a good grip. You know, far. And Lily, I'll tell you what, are we lucky there or oh, not? Yeah. Well, you're fish, right. sir. Hang on. You got it, mate. Yeah. Well done. Mick, it's another clonker. Well, that's my baby. Look at that. That's my baby. There are a few sites in angling to compare with one of these things with a back like a breeze block coming up underneath the boat. It is just fantastic. Look at that. Right, let's get this fish weighed and put back. Yep, same drill as before. We've got the mat down on the seat there. I've zeroed the scales, the sling is wet. Everything's looking good. Right. Incidentally, these slings are very good because they've got like a PVC lining inside them, which protects the fish's slime. And of course, slime is very important to a fish. It prevents it from getting disease. The other good feature of this sling, which I particularly like, I like the fact that you can zip up the sides and the fish doesn't fall out. There you go, mate. What's the scores on the doors? It's about 19 and a half pounds. Well, I'll tell you what, Mick, it's still a donkey. <laughs> That's going to have to do, Matt. Let's get it over the side. Here she, here she goes. Oh. Cheeky blighter. Do you see that, Matt? Yeah, fantastic. <laughs> Getting her own back on me. They'll be asking for these in the shops. Well, I guess we couldn't expect to catch any more pike on such a perfect day as this. We caught a couple of lunkers this morning, but it's been quiet ever since. And just look at this for an evening. That bad weather didn't show up at all, and we have had a fantastic day's fishing. These are perfect conditions, but unfortunately the sun's going down and we've got time for maybe just two or three more drifts before we have to go back to Grafham Lodge. But at least we succeeded in showing you these wonderful trout reservoir pike and the potential that waters like Rutland and Grafham have got to offer. Unfortunately, it might be a couple more casts for me and Mick, but that brings us to the end of this particular episode of Wet Nets. But don't forget to see us again next time when we might be on a river, a lake, or even a reservoir like this one. See you then. <laughs>